It's looking more like August out there in the tropical Atlantic. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're going to talk about Invest 95 out. That's the disturbance near Africa that could impact part of the Caribbean as we get into the weekend and especially to start July. We also have the disturbance known as Invest 94L on the western side of the Caribbean. Could develop into something tropically at the very least, though, bringing potentially some heavy rain to parts of Mexico and Central America. The pattern is August-like. It is unusually conducive for tropical development for June standards. By the end of this video, you are going to know why scientifically and meteorologically the atmosphere is so conducive and the Atlantic is so conducive to development. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on hurricane season and the weather in general, you've come to the right place. Without all the hype, without all the garbage, hit that subscribe button for me. I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Post in the comments where you are watching this video from. Alrighty, guys, right off the bat, you see the red there. 70% shot over the next seven days for Invest 95L. That's the disturbance highlighted here. And I do have the chapters in the description. So if you do want to bounce around the different parts of the video, feel free to do so. Of course, I know your time is valuable. There it is right there, a high opportunity, really once we get out in this region and then through the Eastern Caribbean for tropical development. Now, climatologically speaking, historically speaking, once these things get into the Eastern Caribbean, especially in June or early July, that's known as the tropical graveyard. We typically have higher than normal wind shear there, and we typically see these things fall apart as they get into the Eastern Caribbean. Will it happen this time? That remains to be seen, but... The environment, again, is unusually conducive for this time of the year. We're going to talk about that coming up over the next couple of minutes. I first wanted to show you the models when it comes to Invest 95L. So you see there, we do have a cluster tightly packed there heading toward Barbados. So again, this is your early heads up. In Barbados, in parts of the Windward Islands, Martinique, getting into St. Lucia, uh, north of Trinidad and Tobago. Again, the Windward Islands especially, to maybe start doing your preparations for at least a tropical storm coming your way early next week. You see, this is going to be into that Sunday to Monday to Tuesday time frame. So that's when we could start feeling the impacts of, again, the strength is still in question here, but of some kind of storm coming into the Windward Islands. So just be mindful of that. Now, I want to show you something here. I know a lot of the things on social media or that what I'm seeing as they, what I'm seeing on social media is, oh, the Saharan dust is out there. We're going to be good. That's going to be a false sense of security here. The, right now, we're watching this entity start to dive west-southwest. So let me bust out the telestration again if it, it's going to work for me. Notice all of the orange and brown. So my mouse that's going all over the place here, that is where that dry, dusty air is. Note all of the moisture here. It's kind of fending off the drier air. Modeling, as I just showed you, wants to take the entity here and dip it even further to the west-southwest, which is going to take it further away from the dry, dusty air, allowing it to get in an environment that is more conducive for development. So again, just because all the headlines out there again show that we do have this dry, dusty air, and we do, it's out there, it's prolific, this disturbance is largely going underneath it. It came off of Africa very low, and it's likely going to be steered very low into the Eastern Caribbean. So again, just keep that in mind. I don't want anyone to get a false sense of calm here that we do have a lot of dust out there, but it's largely missing the bulk of it. Another perspective here, I'm going to turn on the dust channel, and there is some dust around it, but note the thicker stuff here. That's going to be highlighted right in this general area our disturbance is right there remember modeling most of it had it diving down to the south before coming back up it's largely going to miss that dust so keep that in mind all right so on to the actual modeling now of this thing i'm going to show you the gfs the european and then i'm going to break down why the atlantic is so conducive by june and july standards again this is going to look a lot more like august wait till you see what i'm about to show you in terms of the simulated infrared satellite it's very very telling about the season ahead there you go. Thursday morning, where we stand right now. Let me send this into motion, and we can watch this, according to the GFS, really get its act together. So this is going to be Sunday night. Here is Barbados. Here is Trinidad and Tobago. Here are the Windward Islands. And then here is our system. So there's our area of low pressure tightening up. By this point, according to the GFS, we at least have a tropical storm 
getting close uh, to Barbados and then eventually getting into the Eastern Caribbean by Monday night, 7 o'clock into the evening, and then continuing into parts of the Caribbean. Now, the GFS was super aggressive. The Euro was super aggressive yesterday. I cautioned in the video yesterday to make sure you're not really paying attention to the operational models, which is what I'm showing you here. And I'm showing you that to make a point because yesterday at this time, we had a really strong system in the Central Caribbean. At this point now, at 9 o'clock on Wednesday, from the early morning runs of the GFS, we have an open wave. So there is that open wave. There's not a closed circulation. So that storm fell apart and did not survive the Eastern Caribbean tropical graveyard. Another important thing to note is, and this is kind of getting into why it's a little more August-like. Look at this. We have another storm on the heels in the Windward Islands on Wednesday. So there are likely going to be at least two other storms in addition to this main Invest 95L that could be trailing, something that is super rare for June or July standards to be coming off of Africa as well. So that is going to be your GFS rendition, and you see that uh, ends up heading towards the Central Caribbean as well. Now on to the European front. So this is going to be the same time frame that I just showed you, starting this off on late Thursday morning into the early afternoon. The European is actually on the stronger side. Again, the colors that you see here are representing the rainfall. So the red is super heavy rain. Uh, the yellow is some pretty heavy rain, and then it, it gets a little bit lighter when you get into the greens. But here is our center of low pressure. Here here is Barbados and the Windward Islands that would push through again same kind of time frame Sunday into Monday and then it'll leave the islands alone on Wednesday and the European does keep it decently strong pushing it into Central America a week from today I caution you this is a week out the intensity the forecast for this are going to change big time I do think that there is some pretty high confidence though that the Windward Islands and Barbados especially might want to monitor this extremely closely. Well, you do want to monitor it extremely closely and might want to start making sure that your preparations, your storm preps are starting to get underway here. I know it's crazy to be thinking about that in early July, but that is where we stand. All right, so I want to show you now some of the meteorology behind this because I always say it, models without context, they're garbage. So I want to show you why that these extremely bullish model runs that you might be seeing on social media are a thing. So what we're looking at here is the simulated infrared satellite copied or overlaid with the upper level winds at 200 millibars. So a couple of features here stand out. We have this big area of high pressure at 200 millibars. That is what a tropical system needs. It needs some calmer air, so a calmer wind. So right off the bat, we do have an environment here unusually conducive. And this is the reason why high pressure on top of a tropical system helps it breathe. And typically, again, when you get the stronger storms, you do have that ventilation brought in by a larger scale area of high pressure. So here is our disturbance. Again, Invest 95L that we are watching for the Eastern Caribbean. But here is that big chunk of high pressure that is chilling just north of that system another thing to watch and typically why we have the eastern caribbean graveyard is this tut as we call it this tropical upper tropospheric uh feature right here that trough tut for short um hanging out right through here in the eastern caribbean this area of high pressure is going to nudge that trough north allowing that guy to come in to the Caribbean kind of unscathed by that wind shear that would typically be there. So let me clear off all my telestrations here. We're going to send this into motion. You can see that high pressure kind of following it. Now, according to this, and this is going to be the European model, on the satellite, we do have this guy kind of falling apart a little bit. Maybe some of that drier air does get ingested to it, which is still there. It is lurking. It's just not, at least at this point, really impacting it. But look what happens. This is going to be Saturday night. We have another one and another one there are three waves out there that have come off of africa all of them looking super super healthy so obviously not what you want to see here uh at this stage in the game and i will you know, continue on to say this is the reason why that those forecasts prior to the season were so active and that preseason or early season development doesn't mean anything 
and into what the season could actually bring. I do think we're going to pipe things down by the middle of July. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, but in the short term here, through the first week of July, uh, things look, again, unusually conducive for development here. So that's how it looks going forward. Uh, here is that tut, by the way, that's way up here now. So that is allowing for lower than normal wind shear uh, in this part of the world to allow anyway those things to breathe. So if they do fend off that dry, dusty air that is close by these things are likely going to be able to thrive a little bit, not to mention the water temperature. That's the other component of this. They are August-like. They're in the mid to upper 80s right now in the Eastern Caribbean and in the main development region of the Atlantic. The main development region, by the way, if you're not familiar with that, that is right out here in between the Lesser Antilles and Africa. So a couple of things there, again, that I just wanted to show you why some of those model runs that you may be seeing on social media are going berserk. There's a synoptic atmosphere uh, conducive to that. All right, before we talk about the Western Caribbean, because I don't want to leave my friends in Belize and in Central America and Mexico out of the deal here, if you want to stay updated on the tropics, sign up for our free Tropics Watch newsletter. You can scan the QR code on your screen or go to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. I visit your inbox every Monday and as needed to give you an update on the tropics. We get pretty scientific if you're interested into that stuff too as well as break down the impacts if something is coming your way as well. So that'll be the non-scientific part because I do want to make sure that everybody uh, gets involved with that stuff. And if you do have any questions, there's all of my social channels right there. Feel free to hit me up anytime. There's the Twitter or the X, the Facebook. If you are watching this video, you've obviously found the YouTube handle. Uh, there's my Instagram. And then if you want to do the email route, jkegis at wkmg.com. Super responsive to that and any comments that you post by. All right, so here is the visible satellite as of Thursday morning. And we do have a wide area here, a blossoming area of thunderstorms in the Western Caribbean. It goes from blank to showing that because this is the visible satellite so you need the sun to be out we don't can't use the visible channel in the middle of the night so it's kind of cool to watch the sun rise up there over and we get that data so this is invest 94 l again this other area of investigation that we are watching looks pretty healthy this morning now regardless of if this comes into uh, an actual tropical system we're likely going to have some super heavy rain coming to central america again coming to the yucatan we do have uh some broad spin into the bay of campeche once again once we get into the weekend and then kind of falling or filtering back up here note that it is wide so this is the gfs and it's not really developing it at that point Still, though, impactful with some very heavy rain coming back to the mountains of Mexico, uh, maybe even into extreme South Texas again. So something to watch uh, right on through there. In terms of the rainfall through the weekend and into early next week, again, while we're watching the disturbance that is currently near closer to Africa, uh, we're going to be watching some very, very heavy rain begin to fall into parts of eastern Mexico. And again, putting on... Uh, some of the radar estimates there, some super heavy rain, anywhere from maybe 6 to 12 inches of rain coming uh, to the mountains of eastern Mexico over the weekend and into early next week. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the ramble. I hope you found that helpful. Again, I always want to have the context. Some models have gone bonkers with the intensity of this thing. Is it possible? Yeah, it is, um, but still be mindful of that a lot of these, especially the ones that have this strong in the Central and Western Caribbean, we're still 7 to 10 days away and things are going to change. It's still impossible to know right now if it's going to suck in some of that drier air or how it's going to react to that tut lifting, although again it is lifting, which would kind of give it a path into the Caribbean to be on the stronger side and not disrupt it as much, but there's still a lot of things to watch, but again, if you are watching in the Lesser Antilles, especially the Windward Islands, might want to start thinking about getting your plan together and certainly continue to check back for updates as we are watching a more robust than normal tropical wave um, threatening the islands as we get into the last day of June and to start July. Thank you guys a ton for watching. If you found this this video informative please hit that thumbs up button and we will catch you next time